it's Dr. Heather here, and I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about bicipital tendinitis. Um, so if you haven't gone ahead and subscribed to the channel, please do go ahead and click that subscribe button that you do see appearing on the screen right now. And if you are a current subscriber, thank you always for watching. And as always, hopefully you're finding the, con the content of value. So at any point, uh, do give some likes to, uh, you know, the material that you are viewing. So. This is really going to address, you know, bicipital tendonitis, which not only can flare up when we're doing some strength training moves, but could also flare up during some activities that we might be encountering, um, especially if you're a tennis player, uh, any action baseball player, um, anything that's gonna involve that really the arm going through various different movement patterns in an overhead extended motion. So like I said, guys, we wanna talk about bicipital tendonitis and how to really kind of avoid that pain. But first, let's kind of break it down and go over the anatomy. So as you can see, I have my friend here, Mr. Super Skeleton, and I wanna address the anatomy with you guys so you have a better understanding of what is going on. So biceps, um, just so you know, bi in um, Latin means two. So our biceps actually has two heads, okay? So one head actually sits right here. Um, if you can see it right where that like blue dot is, this is actually known as your bicipital groove. It sits off of the head of the um, humerus, which is the long bone here. This is our glenohumeral joint here. This is where the gleno meets the humerus, glenohumeral joint, okay? And then the other uh, tendon, the short biceps tendon, would actually sit off here, off the um, corneo, um, chromium process. Um, so with that being said, we wanna really address what's going on here at the long head, because this is the guy that usually gets entrapped um, or irritated, giving us that bicipital tendonitis irritation, which is really a result of a lot of micro tears due to a repetitive action that we've been doing. So in weightlifting, if we do look at movements like cleans, jerks, snatches, things of that nature, there's a chance for that bicipital tendon to really get irritated. It also can get irritated very simply when doing chest press work as well, simply because of a relationship where the pectoral muscle itself Itself can sometimes get really tight and just so you know the pec muscle comes up and over uh, the shoulder joint itself but then its little tendon comes and inserts itself on the front here so if our shoulder is slightly rotated forward in an anterior position there's a chance for that bicipital tendon itself to slip out of that groove which can start creating some irritation weakness in the arm especially with overhead action due to the fact that the pectoral muscle is a little too tight, the shoulder's a little too far rotated forward. So what we need to do is go ahead and address that by trying to bring that shoulder back into its proper range of motion, allowing for that tendon to go ahead and slide itself back into that groove, allowing for better range of motion at the shoulder. Now, with all that being said, and dealing with the biceps um, injury like this, like a tendonitis, you know, we don't wanna just address what's going on here at the glenohumeral joint. I've spoken about this before in other videos. You know, it's one of those things where we wanna look at that kinematic chain. And then in this situation with the shoulder, we wanna address actually what's also going on at the scapula, okay? So just so you guys know, the first five degrees of motion when we bring our arm out to the side is all done at the actual glenohumeral joint. Then from there, the scapula actually takes over. It wings itself all the way up. And then the last five degrees of motion, once we're getting up closer to that 180 position, is done again by the glenohumeral joint. So with knowing that, and say we are playing tennis or lacrosse, again, an activity that requires that arm to be, you know, going through an overhead action, it's very important that we address what's going on at the shoulder and at the scapula as well. Now, like I mentioned, we wanna also address what's going on at that pectoral region, which means we wanna break down that tissue, that soft tissue here in that pec major um, muscle group because we wanna ensure that we have good flexibility, good mobility also too in our chest, in our shoulder to allow for that biceps tendon to go ahead and sit back into its groove, allowing us to work again on you know, strengthening the shoulder girdle itself. All right, so 
As I've spoken to you guys about in various other videos, we wanna start by breaking down the tissue, we wanna start working on that flexibility, we wanna build in that mobility, and then add in that strengthening to really kinda of help that area heal. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and start addressing the soft tissue um, of the pectoral muscle, and also we're gonna look, again, like I said, we wanna look at that shoulder girdle as well. So we're gonna address some soft tissue points here along the subscap muscle. We're also gonna address some also too here at the lat, because uh, that's also gonna be important as well, because we do wanna make sure that our subscapularis muscle and our lat are working accordingly, especially when we need to look at that range of motion of that scapula itself, not just in elevation, and um, obviously protraction, but also depression as that scapula comes down. So guys, like I said, we're gonna start with the soft tissue bit first to really start addressing that bicipital tendonitis. So let's head over there now. Okay, so when addressing bicipital tendonitis, we wanna address the soft tissue bit first. And like I said, we wanna look at our pectoral muscles and really trying to stretch out that area. So first thing that you could do is go ahead and give yourself some gentle massage into that area. Chances are you're gonna feel some tender points um, along that zone. If you have a massage ball, you could go ahead, take that massage ball, put it right up against the wall, put your arm out to the side and allowing for some pressure points to be hit into there. Now, the other thing we want to address with that bicipital tendonitis, like I mentioned, is going ahead and addressing the scapula as well, making sure that we're stretching out um, and working the soft tissue along the subscap muscle and the lat. So for those, we're actually gonna use the foam roller first uh, because a massage ball can be sometimes a little bit more intense. So we're gonna go ahead and look at that first. You could also use the foam roller too on the pectoral region. And we're gonna go through that now. So first let's go ahead and address the pectorals using the foam roller. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come, we're gonna put the roller slightly on an angle. We're gonna lay on it so that our chest actually lays right on the roller. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna place the roller right on that chest. And if it is really that tender, just holding this position is gonna feel like a lot um, off the bat. But the other thing you could do is try to roll around a little bit on it. Um, but again, you might may just find that you wanna hit that trigger point alone. Okay, so there's the pack. And I will say using a massage ball will help just a little bit better in getting into that zone. But if you don't have one, you could use the roller as well. So now let's go ahead and take a look at addressing the scapula. So now we're gonna come down, we're gonna place our roller more towards um, our shoulder blade region, and we're gonna go ahead now and work that tissue out. So I'm gonna come down onto the ground and I'm gonna lay on my roller, getting my back onto the roller. First, I'm just gonna nice and easy going up and down about 10 times. Then I'm gonna lay into the side, allowing for that um, medial border of my scapula to get a little bit more exposed as I massage out that side. And make sure you guys do both sides um, as well. Just because one side's injured, when you go back to lifting, again, when we're talking about flexibility and mobility, we don't wanna have one side feeling more flexible, more mobile than the other, and then having another issue reside um, due to the fact that we didn't address both sides. So once you've done that, you've started, started to get into that subscap, we wanna also get into that teres and into that lap. Now, nobody likes this one when we use the foam molar for it, but we're gonna come down onto our side, we're gonna make a knife edge with the hand, we're gonna place one foot over the other, we're gonna lay back slightly, kind of exposing that lower section of our scapula. And if you guys want, just take a look at that diagram down below where I'm talking about the different muscles that are attaching off that scapula and kind of where we want to um, place our roller. But from here, right off the bat, you could feel some numbness and tingling going on in the hand. That's just due to the pressure because the axial nerve is going to get a little irritated when you're here. Now, if this is really sensitive, just hold. Don't get up and, you know, try to roll around on it. Just hold. Um, and then from there, you could lift the body up and start trying to add a little bit more pressure into that area. Now, I would recommend if you're not having issues with your bicipital tendon, but you are looking at gaining some more flexibility and mobility in your scapula, this would actually be a very good thing to do before lifting or before playing activity. 
So right there, there's the soft tissue exercises that you can do to really kind of help get that scapula to move a little bit better, taking tension off of that bicipital tendon. So allowing it to really kind of relax itself, allowing for strengthening to start to happen again. So now what we want to do is we want to address the mobility component. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to use the TRX to address our mobility. So the first thing we're going to do is when we're addressing the mobility of the biceps tendon is we're going to start with just a nice, basic, easy stretch. Okay. So we're going to take our TRX and you could use a doorway to do this one as well. We're going to do a nice little pectoral stretch, but we're going to keep our arms down here more at a 45 degree angle. So we also want to stretch out our biceps. We're going to walk forward, allowing the arms to really kind of feel like they're being pulled behind us, allowing for that stretch to happen. Right off the bat, if your biceps tendon is feeling very tight, very sore, um, this is going to be just enough for you here. If you're still not feeling much of a stretch here, you could bring the arms up a little bit further and then allowing that chest to kind of pull itself forward, trying to get into that pectoral region a little bit more. I would not advise going any higher because all you're going to do is just jam the joint um, and not really getting a stretch going in either the pectoral or in the biceps, um, just so you know. So now, once we've done those two stretches with the hands here at 45, even coming up just a little bit higher, maybe about 65 degree angle, stretching through. And again, like I said, you could use your doorway as well. The next thing we want to address is actual scapular range of motion. Now, the best way to do that when using your TRX is to actually do a golf swing. So we're gonna come around, we're gonna come so that our arms are here, just right at mid thigh height. We're gonna have um, our hips slightly back, chest is out. We're gonna keep our eye focused down and we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna allow ourselves to really kind of stretch out into this position here. And then we're gonna come back down. I'm keeping tension in both of the arms, allowing for full range of motion, stretching everything out here. You can feel this in the front part of the shoulder as well as hitting into the scapular region, but you're gonna go ahead and give me a golf swing with your eyes focusing down 10 times on one side, 10 times on the other. Then from there, what you could do is go ahead and follow the TRX, watching that hand as it spans all the way up. So you're really kind of now opening up that chest wall, feeling even a greater stretch through the chest there. The final one that you could do, which will be much more advanced, is opening it up into a cross position, which again, if you're not having any acute symptoms, you could go ahead and do, but just be aware when you do this one, you're gonna be coming, you're gonna be pivoting, and you're allowing for a full stretch to happen where you're gonna feel a massive stretch. Right now, I'm gonna feel it on my left side because I'm opening up to my left side, and then I'm coming back down. So again, this is a massive pectoral stretch that you're gonna feel into that bicipital region. It's not one that I'll recommend if you're in that acute phase. If you're in that acute phase, you need to start just working on the soft tissue, the icing, and if need be, do go see your local PT for a little bit further intervention. The very final stretch that you could do using the TRX to really kind of help stretching out some more scapular mobility is what we talked about in terms of really trying to target that lat a little further, because you do want to have good lat, um, uh, you want to allow that lat to allow for that shoulder blade to depress itself all the way down when looking at scapular range of motion. So for that one, we're going to go ahead from here, arms are up nice and tall, fall here, hinge those hips, allow for yourself to sit back down. And then from there, you're going to rotate, looking into that one armpit, then coming back to neutral and then going ahead and hitting that opposite side. And then you can go ahead, thrust those hips up nice and tall. So again, I'm going to show you that one one more time. This one's a really good one to get really um, more range of motion going in that scapula. Again, coming here, falling back, dropping chin to chest, and then going ahead, rotating that body to one side, and then coming back to center, and then rotating again to the opposite side, and again, coming back up. Now, if your biceps is that irritated and you can't even bring your arm over your head, again, this exercise is not gonna be warranted right now um, because it does require you to have a little bit more range of motion in that glenohumeral joint. Um, so if you haven't gone ahead 
and done all the other steps first, or like I said, um, seeing your PT to get a little bit more further intervention. Some of these exercises with the TRX are gonna be a little bit later on when your issue becomes a little bit more chronic um, and we're looking at the injury prevention side of things. All right, guys, so this is just touching upon some of the things you can do if you have a bicipital tendonitis irritation that is starting to creep in and you're not knowing the, the initial steps that you wanna take to really kind of alleviate that pain, that discomfort, by looking at some things that you can initially do before seeking out further intervention. So if you um, found some of this material helpful, please do go hit the like button. Um, and as always guys, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Um, I try to provide as much useful content as possible. And if you have any specific questions about your shoulder pain in terms of how uh, it's affecting your lifting or the types of athletics that you're doing, please drop some comments down below so I can go ahead and advise you correctly so you do get the best care possible. Um, again, whether that's going and seeing uh, somebody for further intervention or just you know accessing my sports telehealth um, three-week program. All right, guys, like I said, this is Dr. Heather. This was a little snippet on bicipital tendonitis. Mm -hmm.